Hello changelings and welcome to the Night Garden. I'm Vampire Antihero and this is Conquer Thy Fear Studio. Hello everybody and welcome back. I am Artemis. I am going to be talking to you about art today. So I wanted to talk about the piece that I just finished called After the Parade. This is a larger piece that I've been doing in kind of a new style. So I figured that I would talk a little bit about what my processes were and also what the motivation and the inspiration was for this piece. So I'm going to switch over to that and we'll get started. So you can see here that this is not the start of the illustration. We're actually almost done at this point with the building that I'm working on and that is because this is actually part four four of the series I'm doing on these. The previous three are already out on YouTube and I have a card in the corner that links to part one. Part one is talking about color keys which is where I started with this and the other two are just straight up time lapses with music behind it. That is because I didn't want to talk about the motivations of the piece or anything like that until I got to the end here. So I'm going to essentially go through this in three parts. I'm going to talk about the drawing process that I'm doing. I'm going to talk about the motivation of this piece, and I'm going to talk about the reason why I decided to draw it. So let's start with the drawing process that I'm doing. You can see on the screen here that I am using a lot of my lasso tool and making selections in order to make gradients and stuff like that. That's because I've been working with a lasso painting style that is pretty graphic in nature. It works pretty well for me because I have a screen printing background and it helps me to get hard edges that I otherwise have a hard time getting when I am doing digital paintings. So this is definitely a more graphic style than I've been doing in the past couple of months. I still am going to be working in a more realistic kind of painterly style. I just need to work on that a little bit more. I'm actually taking a mentorship in the fall to get better at that rendering style. So back to the piece, this is not meant to be any particular city at all. It's very heavily based on New York City. The building with the dome is something that I kind of halfway made up just to kind of divorce it from New York City and make it a little bit more into any prominent city with skyscrapers because this isn't a political statement about where you live or anything like that. It's just meant to be an urban area. But there is a lot of things that I decided to do with this piece in terms of playing around. The clouds are pretty much rendered how I typically would. They're, they're pretty realistic compared to some of the other things in the piece. But the rest of them, the rest of the stuff is all very stylized. I did a lot of strong shapes, a lot of building things with big blocky colors first and then switching to smaller shapes and going smaller and smaller. And I like how this workflow goes. I feel like I got a really good result with that and it allowed me to focus on the whole piece in varying ways. Like I was able to feel like it was further along based on how much I had done with getting the blocky shapes in first and working my way down. It also made me more willing to work on the details when I got to them because it didn't feel like quite so intense of a jump. So this coloring style works very well for me. I will be definitely doing more of it in the future. You'll see similar work styles by people like Alberto Mielgo, uh, Leo Pinto, Rob Rubel, other such people, people who worked on Spider-Verse, that style of painting. So very graphic, very simple shapes and strong shape language. This is something that works well for my brain because of my printmaking background. I went to college for printmaking and it's not saying that I can't draw in other ways, I definitely can, but this just 
allows me to separate things more easily in my mind for layers. And I like this workflow a lot, so... I think that's about all that I can say about this workflow. You can see that pretty much all of it is hard edges. The only places that I have soft edges are very intentionally placed. Like, I had to actually blend those things out instead of start with them soft and build them up to something strong. So having that be intentional made it feel like I was able to control that a lot more and have those hard edges really shine where they needed to shine. You'll also see in a second here that I opened another drawing that I've been working on and I tried to add things from that drawing. Wound up not working. I didn't like how it looked at all. It didn't fit the flow even though I liked the shape and style of the rose window that I tried to add. It felt like it was too detailed for this style of drawing so I kind of went, never mind, pulled it back, and here we are adding the windows. Yeah, I think that's about all that I can say in terms of rendering this. So now I'm going to talk about the motivation of this piece and why I decided to make it. So I live in the Midwest, I live in America, and if you aren't sure about what's going on in America right now, there is quite a lot of debate about LGBT rights, particularly trans rights. And it's been a very contentious place to be. I'm also a transgender man, I am in a gay relationship, and I am pansexual. So these things very much affect my day-to-day -day life, and I wanted to put something together that kind of took my emotions around the things that are happening and put them into something tangible. Because there's a lot that I've been feeling watching everything that's happening in this country. There is feelings of fear, there is feelings of anger, danger on the horizon, a lot of um, discomfort, a lot of wondering what I'm going to have to do. I have goals to be a, a concept artist and work in the industry hopefully as soon as the end of next year, and there are certain places that now, as a trans man, I cannot move to because of how contentious the political climate and the laws are in those states, and that's scary. It takes away opportunities for me. It takes away potential employers that I could go to, and I am lucky enough to be living in a state that hasn't had too many issues, but I recognize that a lot of people right now are also hurting and there's, there's people that I know of who are fleeing their home states and rightfully so because things are so contentious for them. And it disrupts your daily life. It disrupts everything. I mean, it's an almost impossible situation to navigate. There is a lot that can quickly change overnight based on who is elected, essentially, in our elections. And that's a scary, scary thought. So there's been a lot on my mind with this. So that is the, the thoughts behind this piece. So what the motivation is here, what I really wanted to show is... Oh, here I am, by the way, adding the story elements. I wanted to sketch them in before I just kind of automatically threw them on the canvas. So this is what this is. But I wanted to share my frustration because there's a lot that goes into what Pride is. Pride is, first and foremost, a protest. It is a celebration of who we are, of regardless of who we are, no matter who is upset by that fact, it is 
allowing us to be visible and be proud and there is so much shame that is connected to being gay, being trans, oh don't talk about that, oh stay in the closet, that we have fought against and ever since we have started to gain more rights and stuff like that, it is just a celebration, it is a celebration of who we are. But I feel like there is a problem where it's turning less into remembering that this is what Pride is about and more into, okay, we're going to a party. And I wanted to put the emphasis on the danger is not gone yet. The storm clouds are still on the horizon. There's a lot that can change. There, The flags are great, you know, and the party is great, but what happens after? Where does that leave us and what do we need to do? There's a lot of work to be done in terms of activism, in terms of making sure that everybody is included and making sure that everybody feels safe where they live. And so that's pretty much the crux of what this is about. I wanted to really make people think both within the LGBT community, outside of the LGBT community, about their communities, about you know, what people are dealing with. And my thought process has always been no matter who you are or what you're doing, what you represent, you should be kind. You should try and understand where somebody is coming from, no matter what their personal beliefs are. And if there's somebody that's completely irredeemable, then there's somebody that's completely irredeemable. But 90% of the time, in this case, in terms of being transgender, in terms of being LGBT in general, we're just trying to live. We're just trying to love. And there's nothing wrong with that. So that is the crux of this piece. That is really what I want people to garner from it, is there's work to be done. And the people who don't understand, Try your best to be kind, to listen, and to understand where people are coming from. Because often, these things that you're voting for, you don't understand exactly what it means to the people that it's against. And with that, I'm going to switch over to music and allow you guys to watch to the end. If you don't want to watch the process, if you skip to the end, there is a screenshot of the final piece to see and also i hope that everybody as always has a wonderful day and i hope that you all take care of yourselves drink your water do what you can and that's enough i love you all